and things like that. And, you know, what I'm trying to do is just give you guys a good mix of these different animals so you can see them and learn about them. Some of them I'm going to let you guys pet, some of them I can't, but we'll do some cool stuff with them. If you stretch out a huge pipe, I'll let you guys hold that if you want to. And uh, we did this last year, I think last time when I came, uh, we fed the pipe on a live chicken. Everybody really loved it. So if you guys want to do that, you guys okay with this? In the building. In the building. See here. That's why I brought the mat. Yeah. I want to the <laughs> it's, it's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so let's see what I got first. I want to show you a really cool little animal. Let me get a lot of Somebody's pet, and he's one of our newer animals that I made his pet. He is uh, full grown. I don't know if you guys are familiar with hedgehogs. You probably are. Yes? No. Um, no? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a really neat little animal. This type comes from Africa. There's a, uh, a these are Euro European hedgehogs, which are bigger, more furrier than these guys. In Madagascar, these guys have some relatives. They call them tenrex, and they're a lot like hedgehogs. And it's, and it's an insectivore. Has very poor eyesight and very good sense of smell. It's related not to a porcupine, it's related to shrews. So uh, this animal has sharp little teeth for eating insects, but it's not a rodent at all, like a porcupine is. And these little bristly hairs are not meant to come out, it just makes the animal feel really spiky. So when it's afraid, it has this really stretchy skin, and what they'll do is they just roll themselves up in a ball. He won't do it because he's so tame. But if he does that, all these little hairs that are all going this way are going to go all different directions. And then it's pretty painful when you pick them up. But they don't stick in you. They don't come out. And it's nothing like a porcupine's uh, quill, which release after they're jabbed into you. And they can hurt when you pull them out. So this little guy isn't going to roll up in a ball, but I'll just show you how stretchy this is. <laughs> it's not hurting. <laughs> if you guys ever like had a puppy and their skin's like they're too big for their body, the way these guys are. And they have almost like a, a purse string like muscle. And if I, I try to get this guy to roll up in a ball, but he's not going to do it. He's okay. Do they so, make any noise? What's that? Do they make any noise? They're, they're usually very quiet animals. But uh, sometimes when they're mating, you can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of prickly affair. So, you know, I probably do a little screaming too. But, uh, it's, it's kind of like a little squeaky noise, you know, high-pitched noise. These animals have really, really good hearing, or decent hearing, I should say. So they probably pick up a lot of high-frequency noises that insects make that they're hunting for. And these guys are, are tough little animals. They'll, they'll hunt scorpions, small venomous snakes, and they probably have some immunity to those, those venomous and uh, poisonous little critters that they eat. They get a lot of water from their diet or the insects that they eat. They'll eat a little bit of fruit and some plant material and stuff like that, but mostly insects. You can see that little nose going constantly, never stops. Now, an animal like this, people might say, you know, well, it's got such good protection. What enemies does it have? Well, the enemies that it has are not what you really think of. I mean, some animals will eat these guys, but it's a lot of work, and most animals probably aren't going to do it unless they're really, really hungry. So what these guys get attacked by are some of the smallest, uh, actually like parasitic type predators, predators like uh, lice, fleas, ticks, mites, and they're covered with these in the wild. But as the animal gets older, it takes a toll on them. They probably only live just a couple of years in the wild. But in captivity, you know, they could live up to, uh, I've had them live like maybe seven or eight years. But he is a cute little bug. This, this guy is like a, He's like a like a like a blonde albino. He's got a little bit of pigment. He's got very dark pink eyes. So um, normally their color would be like black and white, like salt and pepper. But they're highly variable. You know, you'll see there's like a desert hedgehog. It's a shorter face, bigger ears, darker brown quills here. And these quills are just modified hairs. And it really feels cool when you pet them like this. It feels just like a little brush. I get little kids at birthday parties, and they'll say to me. 
like rice or it's like feels like my dad's beer. <laughs> I get some kids and they'll say, it feels like my mom's legs. <laughs> and then they usually leave the party early. <laughs> you can see all the hair on the, on the belly is really soft. And uh, the little kid like this. I'll show you guys the cushion. It's really cute. There's a the little tail right there. <laughs> now, being uh, that this animal has to reproduce around all these clothes, the males have a very long reproductive work. <laughs> they can just kind of maneuver their way in there and, uh, you know, we guess figure it out. <laughs> okay, so do you guys want to give them a little pet? Yeah. Chris is going to hold them. And it's really cool. And it's just such a neat animal. You know, there are fossils of these animals that are wow. identical to present-day creatures. And, you know, and uh, you know, it may help them learn stuff, but honestly, I think they just do it to look really cute. <laughs> All right. Let's see if I can get a little goodbye. You guys ready? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's a, it's a cool little animal, and it, it can make a nice pet, but, you know, sometimes I, I, people don't realize what's wrong with them. I've, I've seen people come to me with them, and they've got, like, the, all the hair is falling out, and you think that the hedgehog has some kind of allergy or something, but what I usually find it is, is uh, just little mites. They get all over them. If you look at it on, on the animal's nose, it looks like pink dust on the bridge of their nose, but if you scrape them off and look at a microscope, you, you'll see them moving around. And, uh, it, very irritating. It probably goes right into the hair follicles, and, and the animals just have this real unhealthy appearance. And what we do is we just give them a little bath with uh, the food food shampoo. And by doing that, it keeps them healthy. And sometimes they use a little pantene probe. <laughs> All right, take a nice bite. He's a cute little guy. Isn't he? <laughs> well, I, you know, I don't know. Somebody had him for a pet, and uh, they couldn't keep him anymore. And he came with a steel in bed. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know if they have these in Africa. Yeah. But look at that. I mean, isn't that really That's cute? <laughs> <laughs> and they're nocturnal. nocturnal. So, of course, they're... He's pretty active now. But in the day, he'd be like a lot slower. When I mean, you guys are in college, you know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, now, before it gets too late, I'm going to bring out the wings that... We have a cockatoo, and I'm going to get ready because uh, she's probably going to do a cockatoo. <laughs> <laughs> and at the birthday party, the kids really love this. <laughs> so pretty. I know when Chris was like uh, oh. about six years old, six years old, right? Yeah. At the birthday party, your party, yeah. and the kid never forgot. <laughs> Unbelievable. Now this is Louisa. She's a cockatoo. She's a Moluccan or Moluccan cockatoo, depending on how you like to say it. Most cockatoos come from Australia, but uh, this this one they come from islands around Australia, like Indonesia, places like that. And um, these beautiful feathers are what you'll find in all cockatoos. They're very specialized parrots. So they put these crests up, and she'll do it when she's happy or excited. And uh, sometimes she does it to look beautiful for her boyfriend. <laughs> And this bird is like 46 years old, oh my God. but her boyfriend is only about like 14. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, you know, this is full of cooch. <laughs> and she's a really, really uh, beautiful bird. She doesn't look very old, but uh, you know, when you see a bird, and as they get older, what you notice is they get a lot like their feet and their beak don't look quite the same. So. Uh, this bird is 45, 46 years old. That's not we have a, a, a caw that's 75 years old. So the kids got to live quite a long time. Please try to give it a talk a little bit, Chris. Come here. Come
you know, if I do a program with her, she'll be screaming. <laughs> it's really loud. I mean, it's, it's like she'll as loud as my ex wife. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> anyway, I love you. <laughs> my ex wife would never say anything. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I love you. 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 I love now in the wild, these guys are really important because they're gonna they're gonna um, scatter a lot of food in the forest. These really big beaks here are gonna crack open all kinds of fruits and nuts, and then when she's uh, gonna eat those fruits and nuts, <laughs> she's gonna carry the seeds in her stomach, and she's supposed to wait just a little longer to kind of mess it up. And I'll see if I can get her to do it again. <laughs> flying around the forest, you can imagine like all these seeds are going to come out and they're going to scatter them all over the place. So a lot of trees are planted by animals who scatter or disperse their, their seeds in their digestive tract. Could be birds, could be elephants, animals like that. And uh, that's how these relationships of plants and animals have, have evolved over millions of years. So in the wild, you, you have a lot of animals <coughs> that have been, have been you know, used for the pet trade and stuff, but in the Moluccan Islands, these guys are kind of a nuisance, so they, they've all been eliminated from their wild uh, uh, habitat, so I'm sure that leaves a big gap for seed dispersal, so many trees are probably not flourishing the way they would, and you might not see it right away, but maybe 100, 200 years from now, you're going to see the effects of that. You could grow really, really dusty, this dust that comes off of it, probably waterproofs her in the forest, it's like chalky dust, and it's like a downy feather that breaks down, and this fine dust also probably keeps the parasites off her. If you look, can you see that dust that comes off her? <laughs> Unbelievable. So here you have this bird in your hat, and this dust is constantly all over the place. It grows electronics, um, it, it, some people are allergic to it and stuff, so it, it's a real burden living with one of these guys. And I love her, but I wouldn't want her in my house. Sometimes if I have a bird temporarily quarantined in my house or something, it's just a nightmare. So I just don't take any more birds. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you guys want, Chris will bring her around. What's her wingspan? It's like that big. <laughs> 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 I might need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're not in range, She's so I'll take it out and do it. It's like about two and a half right down there. And a bird like this, you're going to see flying through forests and stuff. They're usually going to have a short, <laughs> round wingspan. The leaves, huh? They move really good. Or birds with real long wings, like an albatross or something. They're just meant to soar, fly, and glide. 